Hi guys, my name is Marco Schwartz and in this video I will show you how you can use Arduino, the CC3000 Wi-Fi chip and a temperature sensor to send data over to the web using a service called Zagli. Using the service, you will be able to easily connect your devices to the web to a nice web interface without actually having to do a lot of code. So I will show you how to build your own hardware setup, how to build the software on your computer, and then how to create your account on Zagli and upload your first data to this service. Let's dive into it. So we are going to start with the hardware configuration. And what you need for this project is an Arduino board, a breadboard, some jumper wires, for the temperature sensor, I use a DHT11 uh, sensor, you can also use a DHT22, it will work uh, as well. And of course you need um, a breakout board for the CC3000 Wi-Fi chip, and I use the Adafruit CC3000 uh, breakout board. So you can find all the details about the components and the connections on the article that is just linked below this video. And the first step is to place your DHT11 temperature sensor on the board. Right. Then we can think about maintaining the connections. The first thing you have to connect is the power, so you have a VCC and the ground to connect to the plus 5 volt and to the ground on the Arduino board. And then you can connect um, the pin number 2 of the sensor to Arduino pin number 7. And you will also have to put a, a 10 kilo ohm resistor between the sensor pin number two, uh, two and one. Then we can think about uh, actually connecting the um, the Wi-Fi chip. So just place your breadboard board on uh, the breadboard so you can make the connections. Then start with the power again. So connect the ground to the ground and the VCC pin, or it's called V in, uh, in the case of my board, uh, to the Arduino plus 5 volt pin. Then there are actually quite a lot of pins to, to connect, but starting from the bottom of the uh, Wi-Fi board, just connect um, the pins to first pin number 3, then pin number 5, then you have to connect to pin number 10, and finally to pin numbers 11, 12 and 13. And of course you can find all the details of the connections on the corresponding article on the Open Home Motivation website, which is linked below uh, this video. So now I will give you an overview about the software that we will upload to the Arduino. So, of course, the, the complete um, the code and the detail about the code are available uh, in the article that is on the Open Home Automation website, and you can find the link at, uh, just below the video. So, the code starts by including all the libraries that you need to um, configure the Wi Fi chip and the temperature sensor, and you can uh, define the pins that you connected the sensors uh, to and the Wi-Fi chip. But if you follow the, the uh, previous instructions, this should be uh, okay for your setup. Then actually comes the part where you have to modify something. So first you have to modify um, these two parameters that are on your Wi-Fi network and your Wi-Fi password. So please modify this according to your network. And then you have the Zyvli um, parameters. So the website is always going to be the same, but you, you, you will see that after on Zyvli, you will need two um, parameters. And these are your API key, so you will have to write it down from the Zyvli website. And also you will, you will create something that's called a feed, so which corresponds to this given device. And you will need to enter the feed ID uh, into that uh, field. So now the sketch itself is pretty simple. Um, you you have the setup part when you initialize um, your CC3000 Wi-Fi chip. This is all done by the library. 
And then in the loop function, you first connect to the library, then um, you get the IP address of the Zively website, so you can connect to it. Then you, do, you actually do the measurement, so you measure the, um, the humidity and the temperature from, um, from the DHT11 sensor, and you store that into some variables. Then comes the, the difficult part, and of course you can find the details on, uh, on the website. This part is all about formatting the data so that you can send this data to Zavely and it will acknowledge that data as um, being valid. So this is taken from the Zavely website, so this, this specific form. So I just insert the temperature and humidity values into uh, some JSON um, data and then I basically send this um, data to the Zavely website. So this is just a print uh, to check that I'm, I'm sending the right request and then I, I actually send it. So this is the main part of uh, the stage where I'm, I'm actually connecting to, to the Zavely website and I send in a put request with this uh, feed ID that we defined before. I also have to transmit my API key and then this is the core of, <laughs> of this request is you actually uh, send out the, the JSON data to the Zavely servers. And then I print um, the answer, and we will see after that actually the, the Zavely server will say, okay, you, your data is fine, and you can, you can transmit more data um, that has this specific form. And then we just disconnect from the Wi Fi network. And because we just want to update the uh, temperature, humidity in our home, uh, which are parameters that don't change that much. We will just do that every 10 seconds. So now I will show you uh, how to use the Zively website. And if you don't have any account yet, you can just go over to Get Started over there. And, and then you, you have several options. Um, you, you basically, you don't want to pay for that. So we will just create a free developer account. I will do that. And now you can sign up. So you can just enter username, email, password, uh, some other information, and you can just click on the sign up button. So now that you have your accounts created, you can actually start to set up your, your devices. And for that, you can just go to uh, web tools. And you can see that now I, I'm logged in. And you have develop and manage. But we'll just go on the first one, develop. Um, this will bring me to a page where I have my development devices. And you can see I already have a, a lot of them uh, set up, but I will just uh, add a new device. And I will call it Arduino Live for live, dem live demonstration, right? You can put some uh, comments about that. And I will see that's a private, a private device. So I have to use the API key um, and only me can see the data. And I will click on add device. And now I have um, a new page, which has the name of my device, add new live. Um, now there are some things that you have to, to, to look for. And the first one is a feed idea. Um, this is a number you would have to enter into uh, your Arduino uh, sketch. So, it, so when the Arduino uploads some data, the server can know that it corresponds to this device. And also, you have the API key which appear over there. So you also need to enter this key into the Arduino um, uh, sketch. Now I can actually add um, a channel to my device. So channel, it's basically a variable that gets recorded over time. So I add a new channel. 
and I will call it um, temperature. Pretty easy. I can say units, symbols, I will just leave it blend, I will do that later, and turn value, that's the default value, I would put 25 degrees, right? And now the channel temperature is created. And you can do the same. I will create another one called humidity. Um, current value maybe 40. Uh, the symbol is percent. And save channel. So now I have my two channels humidity and temperature. And these two values, you also have to enter them into the Arduino sketch. So when the Arduino uploads data, it knows that you want to upload this value for the humidity and this value for the temperature. So now we are ready for a live demonstration of the whole project. And you can see I loaded this uh, sketch again, but now I entered my information. So I had the API key and the feed ID, and I can basically now upload the sketch to the Arduino board and I will just press the upload button. It will compile a sketch. And yeah, it will ask which um, uh, USB port I want to use. I will use this one. And now it's uploading to my Arduino board, which is next to my computer. And once this is done, I will have a look at the serial monitor to see what's going on. So it will initialize the chip, start um, to scan for uh, Wi-Fi networks. It will connect to Marco, which is my network. You can see that it will find um, the Zavely uh, IP address and uh, connect to it. And after a while, you will get this answer, basically. So um, the server answered with an HTTP request saying that it's all OK, and that it basically accepted my, my data from, uh, from my sensors. And then you can see that this, the script is automatically doing that again uh, every 10 seconds. So it will go to this process again every 10 seconds and send the updated value of the data again. And you can also have a look into the JSON file. You can see that there's basically 26 degrees in my room at the moment, and there is 34% um, of, uh, of humidity. Now I can just close this because I know it's working. And I will go to the daily website and see what happened. And now you can see that the feed have been updated and it said last updated a few seconds ago, so it means it really received the data um, we just saw inside the Arduino terminal. And you can see that's the right value, 34% of humidity and 26 degrees. So really you can add many, many other sensors and different Arduino boards and see all of your data directly from this uh, main Zavely uh, interface. So please, if you, if you like this video um, and want to know more about the project, go visit our website, the links are below. And please also um, like us on Facebook. We also have a Twitter feed that you can follow. Um, if you do any projects rel related to what you've learned in this video, please uh, share it in the comments on this video. Thank you.